Hello everybody. Today we are going to look at how to run an Anotes V job online. So first, from the Anotes V website, you can directly run a new job by clicking on the Run Job tab at the top right. This link gives you access to this submission page. And there are different ways to give an input to Anotes V. So first, if you want to discover Anotes V, you can load directly the SV input file example and you can have a look at it by clicking there. As you can see, there are six different SV from different type, deletion, duplication, insertion, and you also have additional information in this bed file with biologist annotation and biologist ranking. So now I get back to the submission page. Um, so if you want to use it, uh, this example, you need to set this option to yes. Okay. Else, you can also choose to submit a single SV. Uh, in this case, you need to enter the coordinates of your SV of interest, followed by its SV type. And finally, you can also choose uh, to submit a classical VCF or BED file. And so you can upload your file there. For the demo, I'm going to keep the SV input file example. As you can see, there are few parameters to run your job. And in my opinion, three options are really important to check. First, you need to take care about the genome build option and to be sure to choose the one used to align your data. Then, if you used a bed input file, you need to set the column number describing the SV type. And if you load the SV input file example, this option is automatically set to 4. Because, as you can see, the SV type is given in the fourth column. 1, 2, 3, fourth SV type, variant type. And optionally, but it's highly recommended to use it, you can fill the phenotype field with HPO terms, so you will have access to a better prioritization. This means that the user can identify relevant SV based on how similar the phenotype of the patient is to the gene overlapped with this SV. Basically, the other default options are quite good for analysis. But let's have a look at them anyway. By default, AnotSV extracts and integrates all of the additional data from the input file. And you can choose not to report them by setting this option to zero. The matrix option permits the numerical values to be changed by using a comma instead of a point. And the promoter size option defines the number of bases upstream from the transcription start site. You can also change the SV minimum size here, and it's good to know that AnotSV doesn't analyze smaller variants depending on this threshold. Concerning the annotation mode, you need to remember that for each SV, AnotSV annotates the full length of the SV, so we have full lines, but AnotSV also annotates all of the overlap genes, and so you have one line for each overlap gene. And we call this line a split line, I mean a line specific of an overlap gene. And so with this option, you can choose to report in the output only the full lines, the split lines, or both. Next, you have the possibility to select the SV of a specific class from 1, B9, to 5, pathogenic, or also NA for not available ranking. And indeed, the ranking cannot be processed if the SV type is not given in input. And moreover, currently, the ranking is only available for gain or loss. So, uh, for example, with this option, you can choose, you can decide to report in the output only the pathogenic, likely pathogenic, and variant of unknown significance. So, you can write 
uh, that like that, three to five. Okay, else, if you use a VCF as input, and if you don't want to expand the start and end SV positions with the VCF confidence intervals around the breakpoint, you need to set this option to zero. This will allow you to keep the SV coordinates from your input file. You also have options specific to the genes. So you can upload, you can upload a candidate genes file containing your candidate genes, your genes of interest, and this will be used during the ranking. Moreover, you can set the candidate genes filtering option to 1 to report only the split lines describing your gene of interest. Okay, then you have options specific to the transcript. There, you can choose to use transcripts from RefSeq or from Ensemble. And it's good to know that for each gene, only a single transcript from all transcripts available for this gene is reported. So first, AnnotSV reports the transcript selected by the user with this option. And so you can upload a file with your preferred gene transcript. Else, the longest overlapped CDS is reported, or if there is no difference in CDS length, the longest overlapped transcript is reported. Next, you have options specific to the B9 SV annotations. So you can define here the allele frequency threshold that is used to consider an SV as benign in the data sources. By default, an SV uses the value of 1%, what is suitable for the scenario of a rare disease. But in case of a different scenario with a relatively common disease, for example, you can set this option to 5% or something like that. Moreover, you can define there the minimum number of individuals tested uh, to consider an SV as benign. But in my opinion, 500 is good. The Hallel frequencies will be relevant with this number. Well, you also have options specific to the regulatory element. So an SV reports the list of the genes whose regulatory elements are overlapped by the SV. And since overlapping so many regulatory genes is a problem, an SV restricts by default the report of the regulated genes to highlight the most relevant ones. I mean to explain uh, the patient's phenotype. So by default, only the morbid, upper insufficient, triple sensitive, candidate and phenotype matched genes are reported. And also, by default, only the genes not present in the gene name column in the output are reported. Okay, so next you have option specific to false positive um, deletion discovery. So you can upload a VCF input file with the SNIV indel coordinates from your patient. And finally, you have options specific to a compound heterozygosity analysis. So here you can upload a VCF input file with the SNIV indel coordinates from your patient. I mean a VCF that is already filtered for genotype, frequency and effects on protein level. And so, an OTSV can report the heterozygous SNIVINDEL called in the gene overlapped by the SV to annotate. Okay, that's it for the options. So now we can submit the job. There you get the waiting page with the ID of your run. And so you need to wait a few minutes and to refresh uh, this page. 
finally, you get the result page where you can either download or visualize directly the result. So now you can visualize the result. And actually, we'll go over that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.